Hello! <laughs> My name is Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. You are listening to Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. And Stephen, how are you doing? I'm good. You are so loud. <laughs> just, I just am so excited to be yes. here. Yes. So, yeah. Doing well? Doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting ready for uh, summertime. Yeah, summertime is around the corner. Yeah. What do you guys do? What do you get big summertime events? Uh, we help out with the um, with Cedar Springs with their camp. Yeah, the SOAR camp. Yeah, 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 that's a great camp. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, cool, cool. But I mean, the real camp. It's this guy's camp. I don't want to brag or anything. <laughs> yeah. Also hosted. Pirates. <laughs> yeah. Pirates this oh, year, right? Can we? Yeah. Can we roll the pirate? Uh, we're doing a pirate camp. Can we show that, Greg, real quick? You guys, check this out. Is this not the most epic? Kids camp promo it's you've ever cool. seen. It's pretty cool. Dun, 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 dun. And awesome, right? Awesome, super awesome. <laughs> Maybe a little over the top, but pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. But we're not sponsored by Kids Camp. No, we're not. Today's episode is not sponsored, as always, by Zagnut, the full of gluten, full of peanut butter candy for you and your kids. Yeah, yeah. It looks incredible. Crunchy peanut butter toasted oh, gluten. Oh, and coconut. And coconut. So, I mean, it hits all the major ones, except for maybe shellfish. If they made a candy bar <laughs> the from allergy shellfish, bar. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you call it, the allergy bar. And then, you know, it's, it's great because then if there are, you know, people you don't want to deal with, just yeah. keep one in your pocket. If you don't know if you have allergies, take a bite Chance, of this, you'll find out real quick. Chances are you can like totally, you can make someone go away because they're going to be allergic to one of the things in the yeah. allergy bar. I like it. It's good. Uh, we have something awesome this week. Steven, you know a little more about this than I do, but recently there was kind of an online campaign led to provide aid to Somalia. Yeah, so um, a bunch of, uh, of YouTubers and then also Ben Stiller, they were able to raise a million dollars, maybe a little bit more than million dollars now to um, basically hire a plane and send like 60 tons of food to Somalia where people are literally dying by like the thousands right yeah. now because there's no food there's no water there's this crazy war that's been going on for a long time yeah and man it's just so cool to see people and I know that it might be outside the church but there are people out there and there is a community around them. I mean, a million dollars in less than a day yeah. of people who want to see people helped around the world. Yeah. That is so cool. And I think you made this comment earlier, just that vision, like people follow vision. Yeah, Like if you vision. lead them, I was with a leader not too long ago and their whole thing was people want to follow a leader. Like yeah. very often, you know, something they don't yeah. know about, something they're interested in, they want to follow a leader. So. Often, and, it just requires someone to step up and you're in. And it's so cool to see like things that we do here at the network that go to uh, like to missionaries and people who are over there and like they see that and being able to provide them aid. And I know um, like we send money all the time to like go and help these people because they're we we live in the, the bubble here, especially in the Pacific Northwest. Like yeah. we we have it really, really nice. And there are areas and parts of the world where people really really are struggling and it's just cool to see people um, taking a stand for that. Yeah, so that is definitely something awesome. Yeah, big time. But this week we are talking about defining your target audience. Ooh. Now this is a saying you may have heard before okay. and some of you may have be hearing this for the first time yeah, and yeah. wondering what does it mean to define a target audience and what in the world does it have to do with children's ministries? Ooh, that's good. So I'll put that first question to you. Right. What does it mean to define a target audience? I think it means, and I'm not an expert, but um, I, I target audience, really audience. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you reaching to? Like who? Who? Okay. Who? Who are you building? What you're doing, or who are you doing this for? Really? Okay. And uh, not yes, we know we're all doing this for Jesus, but who are the people who are coming through your door right. that you're doing the things for? Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and we talk, and we've talked here about the importance of starting with why, starting with your yeah. mission in mind and having yeah. like a mission focus. And then if you can't answer the question, why are we doing this? You probably need to go back and like do some more work before you launch in. Yes. But once you know why you're doing it, it's extremely helpful to know who you're doing it yeah. for. It's like, whoa, yeah, great. This is such a good thing that we're going to do. Now, who are we doing this for? Yeah. Because sometimes we come up with ideas that we think are really cool and it just does not translate to our target yeah. audience. Like okay. it was built for somebody else. So let's say our reason why is to tell people about Jesus. Okay, right? that's a good reason. How do you have 
two different audiences for that and what it, what effect might that have on how you prepare to tell to accomplish your mission of telling people about Jesus? Um, I think you just have to go, okay, so this is why we're doing it. And then you have to come up with a plan for each one. There isn't a catch all. Yeah. It's, it just doesn't work that way. Even you even look at Jesus and what did he do? It said the little children came and he was like hanging out with them and right. playing with them. And then the disciples got all mad. And he's like, no, let them come to me. Yeah. You think he was letting the adults just climb all over him and like <laughs> doing all that stuff? No, most of the time he's getting in a boat and going away. <laughs> like, I got to get away from you people for a little bit. I got to go pray. Kind yeah. of draining me. But yeah. the children actually were like almost giving him life. Yeah, yeah. We know like the message, maybe like what we're trying to communicate is the yeah. same, but the method, the way that we get those words yeah. and ideas across will be different. Yeah. Think of even, here's a drastic example, maybe the kids on the ridge here near your church yeah, yeah, yeah. versus some of those kids perhaps in Somalia that we mentioned earlier in our episode yeah. here, right? You would have the same mission of maybe telling these kids about Jesus, but your approach would be very opposite right. once you've defined who yeah. they are. Making references to maybe something like Blue's Clues or something wouldn't translate to the kids in Somalia. Right. They're like, um, hey, I'm hungry. Yeah. So when you start doing that, when you start defining your audience, right? right? What are some questions you start asking to start drilling down and figuring out who they are and how specific do you guys get at, at Church on the Ridge? Oh man, well, it's, yeah, we try to, we try to go as, it, it's hard because you try to go as, as, as deep as you can, but then you're hitting like a subgroup, right? Then you're like, right. and then it's all these different things, but we try to go, okay, our target audience is the fifth grade girls. Okay. Because you wanna hit, at least for us, the most mature level, the people that you're gonna be speaking to, and then everyone else, you just make them work up towards that. But if you talk, less than what the most mature people are in your audience, I feel like you're missing out then on the people who are past that and they're going, this is yeah. this is lame, this is dumb, this is too kiddy or something. Right. But if you talk to, they're getting it and everyone else feels like they're being treated almost like an adult or almost like an older kid and they, they actually tend to still get it. Yeah, so is that kind of your catch, your catch kind of audience that you yeah. guys default to? The fifth grade girls, they yeah. are by far the most mature out of everyone <laughs> yeah. in the elementary room. That's yeah. funny, because a lot of events we do, we target the fifth grade boys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I think, I think that's okay though, because church and event are different. Yes, that's true, yeah, yeah. that is true. And the fifth grade boy, the idea there is that something like the fifth grade girl might think something is cool that the boy does not think is cool. Right. And that's going to happen more often than something the boy thinks is cool that the girl doesn't also think is yeah. cool. Yeah. So we saw the clip for Pirate Camp. Earlier, yeah. Right. Looks awesome. Boys are going to be into that. Girls are going to be into that. Yeah. But if you did something more feminine in nature, the guys aren't going to go there. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Where? Yeah. I, I think that is total. That is absolutely true. It seems, especially in today, you can't really put things on either group, but by and large, if the boys are going to like it, most of the girls, hey, they just get into it. They just, it's just a fun thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we have age, we have gender. What are some other factors you guys uh, calculate when you're doing this? Um, well, our, yeah, our demographic comes into it. And so um, we look for, again, kids who grew up here versus kids who are like you know have moved into the right. area because yeah. they are they're very different mm -hmm. it's uh it's a different and then we look for um churched and non-churched yeah that's good yeah so if they have a church background or a mm -hmm. non-church background you might design something by and large kids in this area do not have a church background i mean we live in one of the most unchurched states yeah. in the united states and then this is also then like one of the most unchurched areas yeah. in the state yeah. and so you add all those things together it's like going in to it and assuming that they know a Bible story that we might have heard all through growing up does not work out. I've had people come up to me and go, um, yeah, who's this David guy that you guys right. are talking about? And this giant, like I've never heard of this before. Yeah. And they're like, how can someone be and like, what? You've never heard David and Goliath? And like, that's a very iconic story. And yeah, they've never even heard it. Yeah, yeah. If you guys have never zeroed in on a target audience, yeah. it's just that idea of trying to identify Who's like the ideal person we want to come to this? Yeah. And just asking yourself some questions about them. How old are they? Are we leaning toward, is this, are we marketing for a boy or a girl? Yeah. How much Bible background do they have? Is there some social economic stuff, say it's an event or a camp? How much right. do we charge? Yeah. Um, what time of day do we make this available? Are these kids walking? Basically, they're kind of like a customer. If this was your business and these are the people that you want to buy into your product, what is your product doing to get those people? Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And churches kind of resist using that language. But a lot of the same strategies apply. You really want people to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So why not use any you know means that you can to try Absolutely. to you know get them there? This so. is good stuff. Awesome. Let us know. Um, write us a comment or uh, shoot us a, uh, a message on Twitter. Um, our links will be somewhere around this video up here down I don't know but it'll be somewhere we'd love to hear from you we'd love to dialogue with you guys um, let us know what you think we can you can ask us anything and we'd love to uh, hear from you guys yep I've been Brent Colby you've been Brent Colby and I am Stephen Salmon we'll see you guys next time <laughs>